Hey, what's up? This is Liam from Cancer Bats, and you're watching Dearly Demented TV. <laughs> so far with the Olaf and while she sleeps. Uh, it's been awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is almost like the halfway point. Mm -hmm. A little over the halfway point. So yeah, it's been wicked so far. Yeah. I'm stoked. What have been the best shows so far? Uh, I mean, Washi Sleeps is definitely killing it in Germany. So the yeah. German shows have all been have all been huge. I mean, we do well there too. So mm -hmm. I feel like, and so do Oathbreaker and so do Hundredth. So I think it's a really good strong package. And then when you show up to a good hardcore scene like Germany, everybody That's shows up and goes off. So yeah, it's been really cool. Okay. Um, I wonder how a, a Canadian band like you um, become close friends with um, the British guys and while she sleeps? We tour in the UK a lot, so we've actually like, we're probably bigger in England than we are in Canada, okay. or like maybe as big. Mm -hmm. um, so just from going over there years and years and years, we met those dudes. When they were first starting out, we like saw that they were touring really hard and like they love skateboarding and kind of the same sort of DIY aesthetic as us. So we were like, oh, these kids are cool, this is wicked. But it was weird, it took forever for us to like even just do a tour like this. Uh, yeah. Just because they would be in the US when we were in Europe and stuff like that. So it's something we've talked about for a really long time. While we play festivals together, it's like, let's let's do a tour, we're all like friends. <laughs> so I'm glad this is finally happening. Yeah. And how do you maintain your friendship? Yeah, it's more whenever we see each other. I think it's one of those things like a lot of bands, you know, when you see your friends, it's like whether you've seen each other like for a year or two years or whatever, mm -hmm. it's kind of like that's the life of tour. So it's like you just sort of pick up where you left off, you know, and everyone's just like stoked to see each other and hanging out. Yeah. But yeah, you might see each other in like a festival in Australia, mm -hmm. and then the next time you're in England, and the next time you're in Canada, or you know what I mean? That's yeah. that kind of thing. And it's always just like, oh, what's up? Like, let's hang out, yeah. you know? So you're like a big family or big bunch of friends. Yeah, it's like that's kind of where you, you just mutually know everybody. Let's talk about Searching for Zero. Okay. Before you went into the recording or songwriting process, you took a break, basically. Mm -hmm. Why did you choose to take a break? Ah, uh, because we'd been on tour for like eight years. <laughs> so we were like, yeah, let's let's just take the summer to like chill out and kind of enjoy our lives that we've built from you know working yes. so hard I mean, the main thing was that Scott wanted to go and learn how to build guitars mm -hmm. he had an opportunity to go to like an island in Spain off the okay, coast cool. of Spain and uh, we were like yeah totally and he was like is that cool and we we're like yeah let's just take the whole summer off like let's mm -hmm. all just chill out and like kind of get stoked on being at home and like mm -hmm. you know just like take it easy from touring and uh, it was kind of like this this epiphany that we had we we're just like yeah we can do this we yes. can just be normal dudes yep. so it was really fun to like do that and then come into writing like fresh and yep. once we started writing we were like okay let's not like rush into it like we always do because normally mm -hmm. we have to like write a record in a month because we need to go back on tour yes. so this time around we were like well we don't need to go back on tour it's basically like whenever this record comes out is when we'll start again so mm -hmm. we we're like let's just like make sure that we're you know working as hard as we can still on this record, but that we're not like, you know, just like rushing towards okay. something that we don't need to actually do. You know what I mean? Yep. So that side of things was like really nice. Like just being like, okay, cool. We'll, we'll like try different ideas. We'll work on parts. We'll make yep. sure like we can kind of see through all the, all the song ideas that we had. So it was really good. Yep. It was really positive. Was it a different feeling to just have time and to spend time with your friends and family. Yeah, and it definitely was a different feeling in the studio. Everyone was just so relaxed and mm -hmm. we had like almost like other real life things. Like I was renovating my house, mm -hmm. so I would come like covered in plaster or I would have been like doing like a day of, you know, running electrical and that was like crazy. That was like so busy. By default, like anything that was happening with the band was like so fun and enjoyable and relaxing because it was like a break from all of this crazy construction I was yes. doing. So it was just like for and everybody was kind of like that. They weren't all building things, but everyone was just like then having the band as like this fun thing yes. almost in the same way like when 
you start a band. Yes. Or like it's like, oh, we're hanging out with our friends. We're like catching up yeah. after not seeing each other for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Instead of being like, I know what you did yesterday. <laughs> I saw you yesterday for 14 hours. <laughs> yeah. You were jamming with me. Mm -hmm. I'll see you tomorrow for 14 more hours. You know, it's like yeah. it was like, oh, oh what'd you what'd you do over the weekend? Like, mm -hmm. oh, I went to you know a baseball game or whatever. And <laughs> cool. it was just like, oh, it was like back to our roots almost of like mm -hmm. when you know four friends come together and play music that they love mm -hmm. instead of like four business partners at the office jamming <laughs> okay um you started you started to introduce some introduce some new ideas on searching for zero for mm -hmm. example you recorded the album without click track oh yeah that was yeah. a huge one yeah i mean that was definitely a big part of ross uh mm -hmm. robinson style yes. and we had even heard about that from before Uh, so it was something that we wanted to work towards. But it's also like an idea that, I mean, has been around forever. I think it's definitely like a real pre-digital kind of vibe. If you're gonna have this record that you want to have sound live, you need to record it live mm -hmm. and also you can't play to like a rigid structure yeah. unless you do that on stage. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so for us to take that same organic feeling that we have every night of tour yeah. and then try and kind of process it through a computer, That was sometimes some of the parts that we found were like, oh, this feels stiff. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, we end up playing it so much differently once we're on tour. Mm -hmm. But that being said, I only think at this point in our musical career, we were accomplished enough musicians to be able yes. to pull off a live record. Sure. So I think it both was like, I wish we could have done it before <laughs> and recorded tape and do all those things. But we weren't good enough musicians that it wouldn't have cost like a million dollars. Do you know what I mean? Yes, and all the sure. other things that yes. you really need a computer to help you out to do, especially when you only have three weeks to record. Did Ross just approach you and said, we we're gonna record this without click track? Or? No, he was just like, I absolutely will not do it. Okay. And like, that's just something that he's like, this is how we do it. And he has a very specific, like, this is how I do things. If you have a okay. problem, mm -hmm. kind of like, go fuck yourself. <laughs> But in like a cool way where we were like, cool, yeah. <laughs> But again, like I said, we knew that that was there. So we like using click track sometimes because in a way it'll help you write. Mm -hmm. Like you can just be like, okay, here's the pace. You know, like yeah. just like having a metronome when you're playing piano. Yeah. It's like until you're really good at that part, mm -hmm. you're like, you can't really drop that metronome yet. So we had it sometimes just to be like, okay, this feels like we're all <laughs> playing at the same pace or we're yeah. playing the same parts. Uh, and then jam tight enough that we could get rid of it. It was definitely like a cool exercise, you know, for old mm. dogs like us <laughs> to be trying some new things. It was really fun. Why did you choose Robinson? Because of some specific ideas he had? Or did you like any records he produced in the past? I was gonna say, yeah, everything. I mean, specific ideas that he has, all the legends that you've heard about him, most of them are true, they're just, different in the way like you know and it's sort of like interesting to hear about this legendary person and to be like oh we're gonna have a chance to work with them but then also like yeah like all of the records that he's done hmm. are crazy and even like I mean we're friends with the Norma Jean guys so we like asked them what it was like working with them and they were like he's the best like you have to do it and yeah. it, the more we talk to people the more you realize like the same way like if your band was gonna work yeah. with Ross Robinson I'd be like he's the best yeah. like you have to do it <laughs> And like I'm telling other bands now too that okay. I think would fit in that same, like the the same experience that we had. I think they would get out of it. So it's like okay. my friends who I know are going to record. I'm like, you should go and record with Ross. Or okay. I'm like, this wouldn't work. Like, yeah. you should record with mm -hmm. somebody else. Yes. Because I don't think it's for everybody either. I definitely think it like with any producer. I think it takes the right relationship. Yeah, sure. Of like you know trust and vibe and kind of like overall idea. For it to like work. You use a more melodic vocal style in some of the songs? Some of the songs, yeah. Was this Ross idea too? No, or? that was definitely uh, me bringing that forward. Okay. So we had like all the songs finished mm -hmm. pretty much in the way that you, they kind of sound now. Okay. But just not as good when we brought them to <laughs> Ross. Yep. So it was a lot of ideas that I was just like, again like fifth record, I kind of realized like I can do a lot more with my voice now mm -hmm. and can take on a lot of different vibes like even the way that we play old songs there's a lot more character in my voice like yes. now like when you hear like how we do sorceress or how we do you know a lot of even just like the thrash songs like they have like different ranges like within them and I think it's just from 
touring a lot as Cancer Bats, but yes. also from being in Bat Sabbath, like yep. doing Black Sabbath covers, but then also being an axe wound, like learning yep. how to scream completely differently in a metal band. It's kind of like opened up a lot of ideas. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh yeah, let's just do everything. The three bands together, axe wound, Bat Sabbath and Cancer Bats. Is the new combined. Cancer Bats. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. And <laughs> did you have to learn singing more melodically on Searching for Zero? Um, or really was it a natural process? Uh, it was a bit of a natural process, but I think because I definitely, it was new to me. Yep. Um, one of the things that we did first off was when we were demoing vocals, like just rough demos, I went to Ian DeSaw from Billy Talent. Mm -hmm. uh, to They own like a, like a little studio where yep. they write and practice. So mm -hmm. um, I got Ian to help me basically like record all the vocals. So we recorded in his studio, but he also gave me tons of suggestions on like, here's how you actually sing, or here's kind of like the melody that you have, but if you sing this a little bit lower, or a little bit higher, yeah. it'll kind of follow the guitars a bit better. So Ian DeSaw was definitely like a huge part in me yeah. like figuring out how to sing a lot of the stuff. Okay. Like the melody in Curse of the Conscience, even though the performance is super gnarly. The, even just like figuring out those melodies and everything mm -hmm. was a lot of Ian. Same with Satellites, same with um, the chorus in uh, in Devil's Blood, okay. that like world on fire. Mm -hmm. Like that was totally what we were working with Ian. Okay. And he was like, this thing needs like a chorus. Like we need to build something. Yes. And that's the side of the story that I feel like hasn't come out as much. Mm -hmm. It's like how much Ian helped out and how much of just a good dude he is. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other guys like Ian and Billy Talent who helped? Um, to songwrite? That would probably be the biggest one on this mm -hmm. one. We definitely like are always like inviting friends and like getting people's like feedback on things. Mm -hmm. Like because like you know we have such a tight knit community like in Toronto, it's like yes. we'll get the Alexis on Fire guys to listen to it. It's like you always want your friends mm -hmm. to kind of like check things out and to be like, yeah, this is cool. Like mm -hmm. do it. Like okay, we did. <laughs> or like Andrew from Comeback Kid. Like we were playing him demos like early on, and he was just like, oh, this is like this is cool. I like what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know. So. I feel like that's kind of like a bit of the community mm. in Toronto too. Okay, cool. Thanks for the interview. Oh, dude. Thank All you. This is awesome. Yeah. Cheers. I'll see you in the pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah.